unlock your world one word at a time. Because language isn't just about learning, it's about living. Learning a new language isn't just about words. It's about expanding your horizons, enhancing your career, and connecting with people globally. Whether you are a language learner or educator, the Languages Pedagogy Podcast is your go-to resource for expert insights, innovative strategies, and practical tips to supercharge your language journey. Tune in now to sharpen your skills, deepen your understanding, and join a community passionate about the power of language. Let's get started. Wonderful listeners, welcome back to another episode of the Languages Pedagogy Podcast. I'm thrilled to have you with me as we dive into another exciting topic that I think every language learner at some point has encountered. Language learning myths. We've all heard them. Those pieces of advice or warnings that leave us wondering if they're actually true. Is it too late to learn a language? Do I need to be fluent to communicate? Can I only learn a language if I live in the country? These kinds of misconceptions can make the language learning journey feel more difficult than it needs to be. But today, we're going to debunk some of the most common myths about learning languages and explore what really works. So whether you're just starting out or have been learning for years, Stick around because this episode is all about helping you cut through the noise and find the truth about language learning. Let's get started. Audio jungle. Let's kick things off with one of the most widespread myths. You can only learn a language if you start as a child. The critical period hypothesis. The myth that children are better at learning languages comes from critical period hypothesis, which suggests that the brain is more plastic and receptive to learning languages during the childhood. While children do have some advantages, the idea that it's possible for adults to become fluent is simply not true. 2. Advantages of adult learners. In fact, adults bring their own set of strengths to the table. Adults have more developed cognitive abilities, which means they can grasp complex grammar and linguistic patterns more easily than young children. Adults are also better at applying metacognitive strategies, which allows them to approach language learning more analytically. 3. Neuroplasticity in adults. The brain's ability to form new neural connections, known as neuroplasticity, does decline with the age, but it doesn't stop. Research shows that adults can still learn new languages, and many people do so with great success. The key is consistent effort, motivation, and using methods that work for your personal learning style. 4. Real-world success stories. Just look at the countless stories of people who have learned new languages well into adulthood. Whether for career reasons, travel, or personal development, people across the globe prove every day that it's possible to achieve fluency at any age. What is the takeaway here? You're never too old to start learning a language. Age might change the learning process, but it doesn't make it impossible. So get started and enjoy the journey. Next up is the myth that you can only become fluent by living in a country where the language is spoken. This idea has discouraged so many learners from even trying, but let's break it down. One, the immersion advantage. Living in a country where the target language is spoken can provide certain benefits. Being surrounded by the language every day forces you to use it, which can accelerate learning. However, It's important to remember that immersion doesn't guarantee fluency. Many people live in foreign countries 
for years without fully learning the language because they don't actively engage with it. Two, creating your own immersion at home. The good news is that you can create a language immersion experience without moving abroad. Thanks to technology, you have access to podcasts, movies, books, apps, and online conversations that allow you to surround yourself with the language no matter where you are, with platforms like iTalkI and Tandem. You can practice with native speakers from comfort of your home. 3. Consistency over geography. What really matters is consistent exposure to the language, even if you are living in a non-target language environment. Regular practice through reading, listening, speaking, and writing can get you to fluency just as effectively as living in the country. What are the takeaways here? You don't need to move abroad to become fluent. The internet provides all the tools you need to immerse yourself in a language, right where you are. Another myth that stops people from speaking early on is the idea that you have to be fluent to communicate effectively. Fluency is a spectrum. Fluency isn't an on-off switch. It's a spectrum. You can start communicating long before you achieve full fluency. In fact, many learners find that they can hold basic conversations after just a few months of study. 2. Communicative competence over perfection. What matters more than fluency is communicative competence, the ability to get your message across. This might involve using simple sentences, gestures or synonyms when you don't know the exact word. Effective communication is about getting your point across, not about speaking with perfect grammar or extensive vocabulary. 3. Start speaking early. One of the best ways to improve your language skills is to start speaking as early as possible. The more you practice speaking, the more confident and comfortable you'll become. Don't wait for fluency. Dive into conversations as soon as you can, even if it's just a few words at first. What are the takeaways? You don't need to wait for fluency to start speaking. Communication is possible at any level, and the sooner you start, the faster you'll improve. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm just not good at languages? This myth suggests that language learning is a talent that only some people have, but the truth is more complex. Fixed versus growth mindset. The idea that you are either good or bad at languages is tied to a fixed mindset. The belief that abilities are innate and unchangeable. But adopting a growth mindset, the belief that you can improve with effort and practice, leads to much better outcomes. 2. Effort over talent. While it's true that some people might pick up certain aspects of language learning more quickly, effort and consistency are far more important than any innate ability. Language learning is a skill that anyone can develop with enough practice and the right strategies. 3. Cultural and environmental factors. Often, people who seem naturally good at languages have simply been exposed to multiple languages from an early age or have had positive learning experiences. This doesn't mean they're inherently better at languages, it just means they've had more opportunities to practice. What are the takeaways here? Language learning is not a talent reserved for a few. Anyone can learn language with dedication, the right approach, and consistent practice. Let's move on to a myth that often makes language learners feel bogged down in rules. You need to master grammar before you can start using the language. Communication first, grammar later. While grammar is important for structuring sentences, focusing too heavily on it from the start can slow you down. The most successful language learners often adopt a communication-first approach. That means you focus on getting your message across and learning to express yourself, even if your grammar isn't perfect. 2. Natural language acquisition. Think about how children learn their native language. They don't start with grammar drills. 
they learn through exposure and practice in real life situations. As you begin using the language more frequently, you'll naturally pick up on grammar rules and structures without needing to study them in depth at the beginning. 3. Gradual grammar learning. That doesn't mean you should ignore grammar entirely. As you progress, gradually incorporating grammar into your studies can help you improve accuracy. But the key is to balance grammar study with real-world practice. What are the takeaways here? Don't wait to master grammar before using the language. Start communicating as soon as possible and let grammar naturally fall into place over time. Another common myth is that you can only learn one language at a time. This discourages many people from pursuing multiple languages, but it's not necessarily true. One, polyglots and multilingual learners. Many people around the world speak more than one language fluently. Polyglots, people who speak multiple languages, often learn several languages simultaneously. While it can be more challenging with the right strategies, it's entirely possible to juggle more than one language at a time. Two, time management and focus. The key to learning multiple languages is effective time management and focus. It's important to structure your learning time so that you give each language the attention it needs. For example, you might dedicate certain days of the week to different languages or split your study sessions. Three, language interference. One potential challenge of learning multiple languages is language interference, when words or grammar from one language interfere with another. To avoid this, try learning languages that are similar or at different levels. For example, learning Spanish and German simultaneously might be easier than learning Spanish and Portuguese, which are closely related. What are the takeaways here? You can learn more than one language at a time if you're strategic about it. The key is managing your time well and being mindful of language interference. Finally, let's talk about the myth that you need to dedicate hours every day to make progress in a language. This misconception makes language learning seem daunting, but the truth is much more encouraging. One, the power of consistency. The key to language learning success is in long, intense study sessions. It's consistent, daily practice. Even spending 15 to 30 minutes a day on language learning can lead to significant progress over time. The brain learns better through frequent, shorter sessions than through cramming. Two, incorporating language into your routine. You don't need to set aside hours of study time. Instead, look for ways to integrate the language into your daily life. You could listen to podcasts during your commute, watch videos while cooking, or review vocabulary in short bursts throughout the day. These small frequent interactions with the language are more sustainable and effective in the long run. 3. Microlearning. This approach, often called microlearning, focuses on small manageable chunks of learning by breaking your language study into shorter focus sessions. You keep the material fresh and prevent burnout. What are the takeaways of this one? You don't need to study for hours every day to make progress. Consistent shorter sessions are often more effective for long-term language retention. As we wrap up today's episode, I hope you found some clarity on what's true and what's not when it comes to language learning. Myths can be powerful. They can hold us back and make the journey feel more challenging than it needs to be. But by busting these myths, we open ourselves up to a more realistic, enjoyable, and effective language learning experience. Remember, language learning is a personal journey. It doesn't matter how old you are, where you live, or how good you think you are at languages. What matters is that you are consistent, curious, and willing to step out of your comfort zone. And before we continue, I just want to let you know that new episodes drop every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure to tune in weekly for your dose of thought-provoking conversations. 
Also, you can find our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. You can also pay a visit to our website, mikeenglishonline.com, where you will find tons of materials, books, PPTs, all of them downloadable for free. Subscribe, rate, and follow us for more. And well, thank you so much for joining me today on the Languages Pedagogy Podcast. I love to hear about your own experiences with language learning myths. What misconceptions have you encountered and how have you overcome them? Let's keep the conversation going. Until the next time, keep learning, stay open-minded, and most importantly, enjoy the process. Enjoy the process.